in the case of red algae let us see what the term is that is rhodophyce now over here we have examples of porphyra we have thoria we have gelidium we have corallina ceramium gracilaria and campia these are the examples of red algae and apart from that you have to remember one important name that is batrachospermum which is a fresh water algae red algae these brown and red algaes they are going to be found in marine environments only one exception is there that i told you now let us see the characteristics of this red algae all species are multicellular you are not going to find unicellular species in the case of rhodophyce as seen in the case of green algae where chlamydomonas was one such example they all live in marine environments except batrachospermum they live attached to rock by a structure called holdfast which is again similar to what we had discussed the cell wall contains thick polysaccharides some species incorporate calcium carbonate from the ocean into their cell walls as well red algae contain chlorophyll as well as phycobilins red and blue pigments involved in photosynthesis the red pigments name is phycoerythrin as we had fucoxanthin over there in the other case over here we are going to have phycoerythrin the phycobilins absorb the green violet and blue light waves that can penetrate deep water that is why you're going to find the red algaes in the deepest of the ocean so in case you encounter a question where you're being asked that which algae would be present in the deepest of the oceans it would be red algae because it absorbs those uh, part of the white spectrum which can penetrate deep into the water and that part is of course it is uh, it is violet green and blue not red these pigments allow the red algae to photosynthesize in deep water with little or uh, less light available reproduction in these organisms is a complex process of sexual and asexual phases what is the stored material that is in the form of floridian starch all right as i told you the cell wall is often made up of calcium carbonate and uh, we have discussed what are the pigments apart from chlorophyll it is having phycoerythrin we have discussed the types of flagella in no we didn't discuss it we are going to talk about it that is there any kind of flagella present in the algae no they do not have any flagella flagella would be absent they would either be present in fresh or they won't be present in fresh water they would either be present in marine or brackish water the flagella are absent food is stored in the form of floridian starch talking about their reproduction as we discussed that uh, we have uh, flagellated zoospores and uh, flagellated gametes in the earlier cases see vegetative propagation as we talked about in the earlier cases it is going to be by fragmentation all right next case is that the asexual reproduction would be with the help of non flagellated spores and in the case of uh, sexual reproduction the reproduction that uh, this is uh, carried out by the formation of gametes that is sexual reproduction would be carried out in an oogamous manner that the female gamete would be larger in size and the male gamete would be motile and it would reach the female gamete so this is all about algaes and you have to understand what is the basic difference on which the classification is made that is the important point that you have to understand the points i have highlighted over here that you have to remember by heart and the last thing that we study over here is the economic importance of algae why algae are so important first thing is that uh, you just cannot get over the point that max maximum of the oxygen release or the carbon dioxide fixation that is the formation of food as we call it or in other terms we call it primary productivity is done by none other than algae so algae are very very important primary producers which are responsible for the whole amount if not whole amount the greater amount of production of uh, photosynthates and uh, that gives them a very important uh, autotrophic uh, uh, position so we have one by one there are seven economic points that i have chosen to discuss with you first one is half of the total carbon dioxide fixation that is photosynthesis half of the photosynthesis whatever is present on earth to eat by other to be eaten by other organisms it is carried out by the algae that you see in water so through photosynthesis this is these algae are doing the carbon dioxide fixation and you need to uh, pay attention to one thing that whenever carbon dioxide fixation is done it is uh, giving out oxygen as well so the oxygen that you are breathing at present some part of it 
at least 50% part of it is being produced by algae. It is major component of aquatic food chain because they are primary producers as we talked about. They are going to be the important part of food chain and the food chain is going to start from algae itself. Porphyra, laminaria and sargassum are used as food. They are high energy foods that uh, are used and you know that spirulina tablets are available in the market that people consume nowadays in the developed countries. In the US and the UK you might have seen that people are consuming spirulina tablets. What are they? They are algae basically which have high energy in them. Then we have algin and carrageen are used as hydrocolloids which is a fibrous structure. It holds water and is used for transports of seedlings and because it is hygroscopic it can store water in itself. So when it can store water in itself whatever dry material is to be transported it can be used in that place. It is uh, the agar that we have in the case of algin we had brown algae it gave uh, agar and agar is used as commercial products we talk about agros gel we have uh, agar agar in so much uh, of so much use in our laboratory laboratory experiments. We have geladium, we have, uh, it is not grolaria, there is, there is a simple mistake, it is gracilaria, I would point it out. Minor gracilaria, again I am doing the mistake, it is this. Gracilaria, they are used to grow microbes, make ice creams and jellies. And as I told you, we just said that uh, people take spirulina tablets, chlorella and spirulina are rich in produce and uh, proteins, pardon me, produce not produce, chlorella and spirulina, they are green algae which are rich in proteins and are used as food supplements and uh, you might be surprised that uh, astronauts which go in space, they take these tablets because they are so much rich in nutrients. So you can see that uh, there is a lot of economic importance of algae apart from their importance that is of uh, great, much greater value that is their ecological importance. So this is all about understanding algae under the plant kingdom. Next what we study is um, Bryophytes which are little bit advanced in algae but uh, this is all that we have in the case of algae.